Hi everyone and welcome. I'm Diane and my passion is painting and creating nature-inspired watercolours in my studio, which are easy for you to do too. I share all my paintings with you on YouTube and on our website, dianeanton.com, you can find free downloadable sketches for all the videos to help you make the most of your painting journey. And if you'd like a little bit more, we also have channel memberships with loads of perks for you to enjoy. So welcome on board, click subscribe and turn on notifications and let's learn to paint watercolour. Hi everyone, Diane here, welcome to my studio. Today we're going to um, paint a little fishing village scene and uh, this is my preliminary sketch. I'm going to be using colours from the A Gallo set, um, some of which are already on my palette, mixing palette here. I'm going to be doing the painting in my Etcher sketchbook and a video of me doing the original pencil sketch will be available for all members on YouTube and Patreon. Um, the downloadable sketch of the final painting will be available to download free as usual on our website. And uh, so let's get started, first of all, with the ink part of this pen and ink and watercolour wash painting of a fishing village. So now what I'm doing is I am roughly, very roughly, because I don't believe in accuracy, I believe in just impressions because that's more fun. If you start having to finickety about it, it gets boring. So uh, for me anyway, I mean, some people like to finickety and that's fine, but I don't. I, I am a that'll do kind of person um, for, for, for better or worse. So there we are. So there's the lighthouse and I'm going to put the birds in first to get them out the way because they are the hardest and uh, most demanding part. So just have to hold my breath and pray that they come out reasonable. Um, they are obviously gulls and uh, try not to let them turn into dinosaurs or something. Very tricky. Um, I'll try and make the, the sketch when I do the drawing for you to use. I'll try and make it as accurate as possible. So you won't have the problems that I face. Right, so that's that. And then what I did next was I, I'm doing it in the same order that I did the drawing, really. I've just put in the, the hills, the line of hills coming down to the sea. Like that, just a line. When I've painted this, I'll probably come in with the pen again, perhaps, and do some more line work. It depends how it works out. But this is this is basically a pen and wash work. And it's often easier to do a painting such as this one, which has got a lot of detail. It's often, I think anyway, easier if you draw it in ink first and then basically colour it in. I find it quite hard um, to do, uh, what do you call them, landscapes. I'm, I, there's a lot of, lot of work involved in a landscape if you're going to do it properly. This is the fish shop. And it's got a thatched roof and little windows and a, a bigger window here where they would have the fish displayed. And that's the line of the harbour wall coming along here, just at the top of the steps there. And then it's going to go into the distance. The perspective on this is sketchy, to say the least. I'm not, not bothered too much about perspective. There's some steps here going up to this building's door. And then we've got another cottage here. And there's a sort of partial perspective here, just a little bit sideways on. Chimney. This one needs a chimney too. Dormer windows. I think we might give it two. Tiny window on the side. Did you know that in England in, oh, I don't know when it was, but some hundred years, some several hundred years ago, um, the government introduced a tax on windows. So a lot of windows got bricked up 
and uh, were removed from, from houses. So you'll often find either the windows were very small, um, because window tax obviously made it expensive to have big windows, or else a lot of windows actually got bricked up and removed to reduce the amount of tax that people were forced to pay. Okay, I'm going to put a boat here lying on its side a little bit. It's being repaired and a bit of fence in the front there. Going down to the cottage garden. And here I thought that it's often you see on um, the walls in cottages, you see these wheels which are from the boats. So a steering wheel kind of thing. So I thought perhaps we'd have one of those there. Um, then we've got a couple of people walking along here in their usual sketchy fashion. With their ubiquitous dog. Okay, and then we've got some, some uh, sort of steps without too much perspective coming down and then maybe there might be a life boy, a life ring, you know, lifesaver ring here by the side for when people fall in the water. And then we've got the, the bottom edge of the sea wall and here I've put in some, a staircase, a sort of set of stairs going up from the water to the top there. And now for the boats. This is a fishing boat with a little cabin here with a flat roof and um, a door there so that the fishermen can get out and some windows in the side like that then we're not going to worry too much about the perspective on the boat because we'd be here all day if we worried about that. So we'll just sketchily put that in, give him some portholes. I don't really think he would have portholes, but he would probably have a flag. And then we'll want to indicate water around him. And there might be something coming down from the back of the boat there. And then finally, we have our sailing boat. We'll put the mast in first and the flag. And then I can do this because I've already drawn it in pencil. I don't know what those bits are called, the bits that hold the sails in the boat. But anyway, they're there. Sails, and I think he might have a number one here somewhere. And here's the chap sitting, steering his boat. And then finally the boat itself we put in. Okay. So there we are. One fishing village. Now we need to paint it. So what I'm going to do first of all is I shall erase most of the lines. The pencil, because if you paint over the pencil, usually you can't Rub the lines out afterwards. Sometimes it doesn't matter, but there's quite a lot of drawing on here, so probably best. And then save putting too much grease on there from my hands, especially if I've put hand cream on my hands, which I haven't, but if I had had, then that would be a disaster. So we just brush that off with my um to a shaving brush.
Okay, so, oh yeah, there's a little bit more here. Now, if you look at the drawing, you'll see that the perspective is somewhat flattened, and that's the idea. Um, then when you're giving yourself a check over, you realize that you've missed out one of the most important lines. So you put that in to make that house complete. And the rest of the details are going to be in the painting, really. So it's just going to give an impression. And uh, to remind us, there's this, there's my original sketch. So we're going to start with the sky. And I'll probably do this with a moderately small brush. This is a number seven. So I think I'll use that for most of it, but maybe for the sky, I might use a number 11. And I'm going to paint round the birds. And leave them clear. And I'm going to, I think, I think I'm going to paint the sky <clears throat> in a pinkish, tone. So using using my gallo paints, I would probably uh, pick up a little bit of something like quinacridone magenta, something like that. I've got my uh, large mixing palette here. And so I'll be putting paint on here to do a picture with. And, but I can't get it so that you can see at the moment, but I've got some pink here. And I'm probably going to use that for the sky because I don't want I don't want to make the sky uh, too dominant. So I'm just going to basically chuck in a little bit of pink. And the reason for choosing pink is because it's sunset, right? And the sky is on the pink side. So rather than getting all confused with trying to make a, a fancy sunset. I'm just going to just going to make it very neutral. And I'm going to leave lots of air. So around the things like the lighthouse and everything, I'm not going right up to the edges because you don't really need to. And then um, I think some bluish tones, bluish green, very uh, grey-ish for the hills. So there we are, and we'll we'll paint the birds later, I think. Now we could we've got a choice as far as the um, lighthouse goes as to what colour we're going to do. I think usually they tend to be on the red side, don't they? So um, maybe I will give it a red stripe, red and white stripe. That's what I always think of them being like that. And then obviously at the top here, I'm going to have some blue because or gray. And then the rocks. Well, my favorite rock color has got to be Naturno, which is this color. And just pop, pop that in there, add a little bit of blue to it to give us some shadows and just drop in a couple of shadowy spots there. Let that bleed, leave that alone. And now I think I'll just uh, swap back to my smaller brush. And I'm hoping that this is going to dry fairly quickly. 
um, the roofs need to be a nice, I don't know, um, grayish color maybe, or should they be brown? That's a good question because um, if they were slate, they would be gray, and if they were thatch, they would be brown. So it's up to you. Probably more stylish would be something on the blue-gray side, something on the mauvish kind of side. Um, let me think, what shall I do? Um, what about Indian Throne Blue? Let's try that. Indian Throne Blue. I think Daniel Smith do an Indian Throne Blue too. This is a gallo. And then if you add, if you want to make them varied, I've just added a little bit of alizarin crimson to the Indian Throne to make it a little bit darker like that. So a different, slightly different colour. And then the one in the background there, we could, we could do this one a little bit on the green side. And then this one down here, because it's front ways on, it's going to lose most of its color. It'll just make that sort of gray. And then we want to pick up some something sort of very dark brown or blackish for the windows. And we just paint the sort of top and one side for the windows to give a little bit of depth like that. And you can do the same for your doorway. If you want to put those uh, lines of the window bars in, you can do that afterwards with a white pen. So I think that's probably what I'll do. Just put the shadow in and that sort of gives a little bit of shape, a bit of perspective. And you don't have to use black for this. I'm using a mixture of, um, I don't know, some dark colors mixed up together. Anything dark like that. There's another door there. Okay, and then the the harbour wall, I think um, I thought it would be nice to do it in two colours. And so I was going to put kind of Oh, this is quinacridone red gold. And then underneath, a little bit more shadowy. So just add some phthalo blue, for example, to that. Just to give it, I don't know, just to make it sort of more varied and then take that same color up and into the distance so it's gonna get fainter up there. And then obviously have to do the steps. And this is another ladder here. So let me just pop in some shadow on that one too. And maybe um, just some darker at the bottom. That hopefully will sort of bleed in a little bit. Okay, and you could, if you want to, uh, indicate some stones in the harbour wall just by dropping in some colour. That will uh, mix and mingle quite a bit. And we're going to want then some pale blue for, uh, to give, oh, not quite that dark. To have some shadow on the houses.
pick one side and put the shadow on, say, for example, here, the left. And if you don't think it's dark enough, you can just add a bit more and let that blend. Okay. Um, there's a small error there. That was meant to go down further. All right. Uh, So while I'm working with the blue, I could do some color on the, some shadow really, because these are white, these birds. So they just need a little bit of blue shadow. And depending on how, um, how much detail you want, you could, you could put in their beaks if you want. And a lot of these gulls have a pretty dark sort of tip to their wings so you could just drop that in and let that bleed a bit for example and up here we can come back into the lighthouse Get a bit more dimension there if you wanted to um, now we have to choose what color we're going to do our boats and I'm sort of thinking green greeny blue something for for this one maybe a bit more green and then perhaps we'll make the wheelhouse blue perhaps and a bit more shadow in there and then maybe sort of red roof just because why not but then this boat um don't really want to put too much color in here so maybe we'll make this one blue So it could really be considered to be white and we'll put the shadow of the sail in. It's quite a big um, area, so we don't really want to make it too much, but then we'll put the man in a red, wrong, wrong red, wrong red, this should be this red. Plus we've got a couple of people up here who ought to be wearing nice red jackets because they're walkers and then they would have jeans on, no doubt. Like that. And now pretty much the last thing is going to be the sea. So bearing in mind this is Cornwall, it's not going to be very blue. Um, let me just drop in some some water. This paper is not behaving very well at all. Even though I'm barely touching it, it's um, bobbling up. And I'm barely, I am literally barely touching this, which is strange because up until now, all the pages in this book have not been bad at all. I've quite enjoyed painting on them. But this one, all of a sudden, is not behaving at all. And uh, hopefully when it's dry, those marks will disappear. And I'm also thinking, what am I thinking? I'm thinking a little bit more colour underneath the boat. 
about uh, and in front of the lighthouse perhaps that's pretty shocking actually what's happening with this paper I don't know why that's happening okay so having done that we now need to let it dry Okay, so now this is dry and I've had a little bit of a think about it. And um, yeah, it's uh, it's looking okay. And um, we're sort of thinking, I'm sort of thinking we can put in a few um, things like a few shadows, for example, on some of the uh, areas of color. So a little bit of more red there and then uh, probably just to indicate shape, because it would have shadow on both sides. We put a little bit of blue there. Um, and then maybe come into the C a little bit with some lines. And I'm using um, gouache for this, because um, if you use gouache for lines on top of watercolour, you can use ordinary watercolour, um, but the gouache kind of stands out a little bit better. So that's probably uh, one good reason for, for using it to darken certain areas if you want to do that. So using different, different shades of blue to give some effect of waves and things on the or ripples at least. And you can do as much of that or as little as that of that as you as you want and you could paint in some um, some clouds if you wanted to in white or you could leave the sky as it is you could <clears throat> obviously add a little bit whoops I wouldn't want to do that I picked up something completely wrong there but we'll just wash that around a bit until it disappears I was going to say you could just um, darken some parts of the hills a little bit to make the houses stand out a bit better. Um, and then really what I'm doing is I'm just going around and uh, using watercolour here, just um, emphasising the shadows a little bit with watercolour. And then I'm going to actually use, for the stones on the harbour, I'm going to go around them with I can make that work. It's not my day today, is it? Yeah, there we go. So we go around the stones with the white gel pen. Just, just to give them some shape. Again, optional. I'm just kind of thinking of things as I go along. How I would do this. Maybe just do some without any colour on the inside like that. And then probably I would turn now to the um, Pigma pen and um, as I said at the beginning, this is where you can come back in, you've got your sketch, you've got your colour now and you can come in and if you want to just emphasize all the details. I quite like having a combination of a little bit of line and wash and uh, quite a bit of line and a little bit of wash. So you can put sort of Bit of feeling in there with the line that you can't really do with paint if you want to you know you could have some small stones along the top of the harbour wall like that some decorative stones
I'm just going to grab the hairdryer and dry that piece before we're making this. That should be okay. Now this boat here, I know you think it looks as if it's up in the air, but it is, and it is, because it's being repaired, so it's on a stand. So we just put the stand in now and uh, pretend that that's being held up. And probably I need to just grab some, some paint and pop a little bit of shadow inside the boat and underneath. And maybe we'll put a little bit of brown in one or two places. Maybe these windows would have shutters. That would be quite nice. And this wheel needs an outside edge, like that. Uh, the fence is coming along here. That house is meant to be a little bit further away, so we won't worry too much about details for him. And maybe a tiny bit more shadow under the line of the roof. Just emphasize the railing a bit here. Don't want people falling out of. The lighthouse, do we? And some lines for the sea. And you could go on like this for ages. You could continue to do this for ages. Uh, but I'm not going to. I'm going to stop soon. I think we put an edge on the top of this boat. And I think he needs a head. He's looking a little bit, you know. There we go. He's got a tiller here. I'm not quite sure how to draw that, so I'm not going to bother. And maybe he should have a name on the boat here. I'll put something here. Starfish. This one ought to have a name on it too, shouldn't it? Fishmonger. And give him some hair and her. And I think that will do. Oh, I know what I was going to do. Need a little bit of uh, shadow on the inside of these doors and windows. There we go, and maybe we'll put a bit here too. Oh yes, and these portholes, which I'm sure he wouldn't have, but I just thought the hull of the boat looks a bit boring, so I'm going to add a little bit of timber line. Imagine that that's a boat made of wood. And the chap is inside here. Just draw the ghost of him here, shadow 
There's somebody in there. Okay, uh, there's a flag up there. He's got a flag here, a little white one. And I think I'm going to call it a day. I should put the eyes in for the... See, you can go on forever. There's always something else. Put the eyes in for the birds, maybe emphasize their wings a little bit more, make them a bit more important. There we are. Okay, so there we are, harbour scene. The sketch of this will be on the website for free for you to download. If you want to um, get the original sketch, watch me actually doing the original sketch, then um, that will be up on Patreon or on the membership for um, the uh, YouTube. So either, if you join either of those, from, I think, it's, I don't know, three pounds a month or something uh, to support me, or you can pay a little bit more if you want to, um, then this is one of the perks that we're going to be offering, will be uh, the, the the bits that make the video a little bit too long for YouTube, but and it's not necessary, not absolutely vital that you have, um, uh, that you've watched me actually do the sketch because you saw me inking it in. But if you want that extra detail, uh, thought process or whatever you want to call it as I wander my way through a design or something then um, we thought it, you might quite like that and you can have that if you want it um, so yeah there we go um, have a look at the website dianeanton.com we have just released a new mug with one of the um, paint a bird a day birds on it, which I think is really cute. We've ordered one for ourselves. So I'll show you that when it arrives. It won't take, won't take too long, I don't think, to arrive. Um, but it looks really, Tamsin's done a very good job of designing. I think I will put those logs in there that I had. I thought I was going to put a log pile outside and then I took it away, but now I've decided I'm going to put it back. There we are. Um, yeah, really nice design that she's done. So. If you are interested in acquiring a memento of your painting journey with us, the Paint a Bird a Day mug is now available from our website. It's supplied by Spring. You order it from Spring and they send it and they come pretty quickly. And they're really quite nice. You've got two sizes, a small and a medium or a medium and a large. Um, I don't know, are they 10 and 15 ounces or something like that? I never did draw the dog properly, did I? There he is, a little Scotty dog or something. I have to stop. I will go on forever, going over and over the lines again and again. But I'm not completely unhappy with that. This turned out okay, I think. Looks like seaside scene to me and uh, so there we go have fun enjoy um, and I'll see you again soon so bye for now everybody bye bye